Hello everyone. Today we are here to discuss entire work of KK Nasirwanzi Daruwala. From the examination point of view, we are going to talk about his entire work, or words, and the characters in his works. Okay, so let's begin. KK Nasirwanzi Daruwala is a celebrated poet in Indian English literary circle. Daruwala has gained acclaim as a novelist and short story writer. He was born in the year 1939 in Lahore, British India. The date of his birth is not specified. Before deciding to be a poet, he was IPS officer in 1958 and was eventually appointed as a special assistant to the Prime Minister on International Affairs. He subsequently was in Cabinet Secretariat until his retirement. Let's talk about awards and honours that he received in his entire lifetime. His literary potential is marked by the prestigious Sahitya Academy Award, which he obtained for the collection The Keepers of the Dead in 1984. Please mark it because this is important for the examination. Also, for landscapes, he won the Commonwealth Poetry Prize Asian Reason in 1987. The award that he had received, he had returned the same award in the year 2015 in the month of October because he protested because in protest and with a statement that the organization Sahitya Academy has failed to speak out against ideological collectives that have used physical violence against authors. After that, we see Darwala did not take back his award even after Sahitya Academy passed a resolution condemning the attacks on rational thinkers. Compliment of then we see the compliment of Nizim Ejkil. Darwala has the energy of the lion. He told this because of his excellence performance in literary tasks. Let's talk about his work. Under Orion, it was published in the year 1970. Then we see this was his first poetic collection. This also very important. Then we find apparitions in April. Here we find crossing of rivers and uh, winter poems which was published in the year 1980 and this poetic collection was published in the year 1976. Then Winter's poem in the year 1980, The Keepers of the Dead, for which he has received Sahitya Academy Award. It was published in the year 1982. Next, Commonwealth Award winning work, Landscapes, was published in the year 1987. A Summer of Tigers in 1995, he got it published. Then, Night River. Recently, it was published in the year 2000. Then, The Map Maker, 2002. And all these are extremely important work. Under Orion, his first collection... We find the discussion of Badrinath, the Ghagra in Spade, Shiva of Timarsen, the Myth of Shiva, Cholera, Communal Tension, Curfew, Riot, Torn Landscape and so on of that type as he is accustomed to that type of landscape painting scenery. And here also again we find uh, something it is of his Persian connection as he is a Parsi, something it is related to the quest for identity as, as often asked with regard to an Indian writing in English and something it is of his posting and placement. The poems are no doubt of a different space, archetype, whatever be the thought and content. Here we get to see, being an Indian, he longed for Indianness and uh, he was always diasporic because he stayed in foreign country for a period of time. In Daruwala's first collection entitled Under Orion, there is very powerful river poem called the Ghagra in spade and uh, this poem invites a comparison with famous Indian A. K. Amanuja's A River. Let's move ahead. Both the poets describe the river as a violent force. Daruwala's poem is more intricately structured and the river has almost an animal presence animal presence it means wildness okay 
the wildness of river is mentioned here. The formation of India and Pakistan ached him a lot and this pain is seen in almost each and every work of Daruwala. He witnessed reality contrast to his vision. The he found that imaginary world is, no it is totally contrast with the reality. And the same is seen in his poetry as well. The kind of land he wanted to see and the kind of land he witnessed is mentioned in his work. Then we see his modern western education, the post he was positioned and the reality that he experienced are reflected in his poems. This I have already discussed here. Let's move ahead. Daruwala's portrayal of landscape is though of both, though of both wild and mild aspect, he largely chooses to depict its harrowing violent features. His famous poem, The Ghagra in Spade, is of this nature. The Ghagra as a river, it sustains the life of people, but when it goes violent, it destroys. This is what we get to see in Daruwala's poem. Next is the last point. He has experienced the consequences of the post-independence trauma. For Indian, it was not easy even after receiving independence. There were so many turmoil which went, uh, which went on, which continued and people were migrated, people were displaced because of this incident. So this is what we get to read in his books. Here, the river changes its course every day. Here, the river changes its course every year and also its color at different times of a day. The poem reveals the terror of the villagers at night as they fought the river. This is how the poet describes the terror of the river. Water is elixir to our life and it destroyer as well. So, we need to see both the aspects of nature and through the poetry of Darwala it is revealed to us. Next we find Darwala is a poet who has a deep concern of Indian society though he has not explicitly expressed his concern of Indian society. His choice of subject, theme and his vivid depiction of unhealthy practices of the people are nothing but his concern for the society. I have already told you he longed for Indianness. So, even if he stayed, even if he was in foreign country, his heart was at his motherland. Okay, he always talked about the malpractices that happened in Indian society and he wanted, he showed his concern to change it. He is able to express his sympathy of the Indian society in a subtle way. This is obvious. Now, let's move towards another work of Darwala. Here, the title is From Ruminations. The poet could experience about the probing danger. He shows the power of violent rain, which will destroy him. The violence is likened to the rain, owing to its unpredictable nature and its ability to blind one's vision. Now here, again, the writer, the poet, is talking about the power of rain. Okay. The tragedy would be caused by the mutual abhorrence or hatred which prevails between two different groups of people. The poet goes in search of those places where this violence might break out. Tragedy would lead to killings and the poet looks for the possible places where death might spread its wings. Here, the nature is violent, at the same time the people as well. Okay, two groups of people will fight against each other and this is showed through water. Next is the professor condoles. This is extremely important poetry and we are going to discuss this in details. The poem, The Professor Condoles, is a sad and tragic poem reflecting a boy's untimely death in an accident. This poem is Professor's reaction to the death of an 11-year-old boy in an accident. It voices the grief of Professor at the death of an innocent child. It is a tragedy which encompasses a culture involving sin, guilt and hamartia. In the poem, the poet addresses to the brother of dead child, an accident is an unexpected occurrence and without design. The poem is a reaction to an 11-year-old boy's death in an accident. Here, the brother of the boy went to the professor seeking guidance. The professor feels the mind of the student. He must be distracted from the accident, accident's thinking. So, he chooses the word tragedy and insists the student does not call the accident a tragedy. He means that it is not an accident. He means it should not be called as tragedy because it is law of nature 
according to the law of nature it has happened and this is how his death was written so it should not be called a tragedy the condolences of professor offers an intriguing substitute to the normal response to death and sorrow when someone faces the death of a near ones only sympathy alone cannot be help to the victim in facing sorrow the individual has to be given a certain objectivity and the professor does that in his way now here the professor wants to say that death happens to each and every one it is universal truth but after the demise of any near and dear ones the objectivity after his death what is the objectivity of the people who are on earth that should be revealed to them so that it will be easier for them to live without their near and dear ones let's move to another poetry that is the paper and sorry the novel paper and christ it is a historical novel it released by it was released by veteran journalist mark tully in the capital friday the novel was based on vasco da gama's voyage to india for the trade of spice and touching on the search of the portuguese for the legendary prester john is set in the 15th century when the portuguese the seas collecting maps and sending spies along the red sea to understand how the arabs carried on their spice trade with india so basically it talks about history of india and european countries and uh, how india's spice how india's spices enchanted outsider for the business let's move ahead the writer enlivens a world of turbulent voyaging during the time of vasco da gama and era an era when the search of for indian spices reached a passion for exploration then they were enchanted by the last point here the animals butchered in autumn and eaten in winter stank and europe was in demand of indian spices to make their meals aromatic and give the meat a new flavor here why we know that spices attracted europeans and uh, they required spices to taste up their food and after this enslavement of india occurred in the hands of one after the other legends of magnificent christian dominion nestled in the heart of the east and ruled by the fabled prester john also generated intense curiosity about lands bordering the indian ocean here we find preaching of christianity which started after their arrival which is mentioned in the this novel which is written by daruwala daruwala not only talks about history but it excavates all the truths that were hidden in his books brother figaro a missionary tofik a seller estham an artist and three men and three men of power a mustasib zamorin and an abbot go on a journey of discovery as the conflicts between islam and christianity intensify this is very important please put an asterisk mark here individual destinies of the voyagers collide and change in the process while the missionary and the sailor are part of the gama fleet searching elusive spices and a legend the three men in power play out their role in areas that they control the socks of cairo calicut under the zamorin and in the christian shrines next work is a house in ranikhet the book consists of 16 stories it is also 
It also includes a cluster of stories around a group of characters in Rani Khet. The settings of this story are far flung both in space and time. A sense of loss is a constant in this volume and directness and unsentimentality of its perception have all the clarity of poetry. Here, the stories that constitute a house in Raniket are interlinked by strange and erratic narrative compulsions. The characters are vulnerable people, sometimes overwhelmed by circumstances. His concerns are centered on how dreams and fables, myth and memory forge a real forge a reality of their own and make people act and stumble in the way they do. Daruwala's interested Daruwala is interested in what lies behind the faggot. Next work is Swerving to Solitude Letters to Mama. Here it is prolific Daruwala's third novel. It is set mostly in Lucknow and Delhi. Though the narrative spans Vancouver, California and Mexico. Here, the protagonist is Seema, who is married to a deputy secretary in the Prime Minister's Secretariat. This voices her dissent during the emergency, which leads to marital discord and less predictability to a new reckoning of her mother's private history. Mama's feelings for M. N. Roy, a major leader of the communist movement in British India and abroad, and her struggles to be supportive even after his disenchantment with communism. The book teems with characters. There is Alfred Hemmings, a Western journalist from the Christian science monitor who unaccountably disappears. His girlfriend Shilpa, the lawyer Bipin Kumar, the clairvoyant Muslim child Elham who is sheltered by Singh through the mayhem that follows Indira Garcination. And in passing some real life figures like the former information and broadcasting minister V.C. Sukla and the Congress Party freedom fighter Lala Lajput Rai. So it talks about, his novels talks about the situation during emergency which was implemented by Indira Gandhi, then Prime Minister of India. So it talks about our history and its relevance in present as well. By this we have completed the work of Daruwala. I hope it is going to be helpful in your examination. We will meet in our next video at 7.30. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.